Okay. So the last one that I'm going to cover is on buckling of frame itself. Okay. The buckling of frames is covered in chapter four of the books by charges. So buckling of frame is we will go into not very detailed just to give you an overall ideas um, between braced frame and unbraced frame. So what is their yeah, buckling mode? Okay. And how can we how can we get the idea of their buckling mode? So shown here because so far we consider I accept the example on the matrix method just now. We consider column individually. Okay, what is a critical load? We take the column, we take the member from one particular structures, and then we consider the support condition, then we, we evaluate the critical load. But most of the times, the column, they are not individual. They are part of the structure. For example, frame here. Okay, so frame here, uh, members of structures that have vertical member, horizontal member, they are connected together and they are subjected to vertical load and horizontal load. Okay. So when you have members which are subjected to vertical load, of course, then you get the problem of buckling. So the behavior of a frame under loading will be affected by what is the buckling load of the column, which is one of the member in the frame. If the one of the column buckles, of course, it's going to affect the whole frame. Okay. So now we are going to look at the buckling load and also the buckling mode of the whole frame, okay, which is not individual column. But of course, the whole buckling load of a frame will be affected by some of the members, individual members. Okay, maybe one member's buckle, maybe two member buckles at the same time, maybe part of the member buckle first. So we are not going to go into very detail how to analyze frame, I think, but we are going to what I will go through with you is there are two types of uh, two group of frames that we should be looking at. The first one is what we call side sway prevented, which is they are not allowed to sway. And the second one is side sway permitted. So they are allowed to deflect laterally. So here you don't, you see they are not, their deflection, they cannot deflect laterally. This is one group we call side sway permit prevented, and this is side sway permitted. So from here you can see the difference in how they can deform is this one can go left and right laterally, this one cannot. So this is brace and this is unbrace. Brace frame, unbrace frame. Okay. Now we want to look at first if if the frame if the members in the frame buckle how is the buckle shape for the, this case and for this case and secondly if we want to know the critical load so which one will be higher the same frame which is allowed to sway and not allowed to sway which critical load which critical load will be higher, this case or this case. Okay, so those are the things that we want to look at. And later we want to see what is the range of the critical load for this case and for this case. So that is the things that we want to look at. And there will be detailed derivations of the critical load by getting the governing differential equation for this case and for this case to get the detailed critical load, what is the effect of different factors of the frame. So here, I <clears throat> write down here first 
sites were permitted versus sites were not permitted. So two groups of rain. And there will be, because the sway is not permitted, so the way they can buckle will be different. Okay? So there are different buckling modes involved. For side sway buckling, and for this is uh, side sway prevented, we call that symmetric buckling. Okay? For side sway prevented, in this case, we call them symmetric buckling. Next, I will show, explain why we call that symmetric buckling. This is mainly because the mode shape is symmetric. For side sway buckling, the mode shape is not symmetric. Now, let's look at the buckling mode first. Okay? Let's look at the buckling mode first for these two categories. Okay? So when we talk about buckling mode, yeah, which means we take the case of uh, this fix first. This is fix. Yeah. Fix. So if we have this loading P acting here, so if you increase slowly the P increase at certain limit, when P is already equal to P critical, this column and this column, they will buckle. Okay. So when P is equal to P critical, this column and this column, it can take additional, this uh, slightly bent configuration, or this column and this column will buckle. Okay. So now, if side sway is prevented, I, I put it in this way. So sometimes we put like this, this is brace. Yeah? We brace it, which means it's not allowed to go left and right. Or this is side sway. Prevented. So if side sway prevented, meaning that this and this, they cannot go side, cannot go left and right. Okay. So in this case, how they can buckle? Okay. So one possibility it will buckle is this is fixed. Yeah? So this is fixed. So rotation here must be zero. But this is connected to the other member. So when this P is equal to P critical, so this column can take another shape. So it will buckle like this. It will buckle like this. This is fixed, so it has to be, it has to come like this. Then this one, it can also buckle like this. But if this one is this one is like this, they are not free. So there are a beam here. This is a beam here. So this beam also, this rotate, this side also beam also must rotate. This one rotate, this side of beam also must rotate. So if this bend like this, this bend like this, then this one, the beam must bend like this. Because here and here, rotation, they must be the same. But then it's also possible that if you apply the note here, P, P and P. It also can go one like this.
This one also like this. Because it can go either way. Okay. This one we show like this. Show like this, but the beam has to bend like this. But if this one, then the beam has to, this one must rotate, the beam must rotate like this. This beam must rotate like this, so the beam has to be bent like this. So there are two possible, two possibilities. So this is for side sway prevented. Now, the question is, which one will happen first? Which one is P critical here? Or the P critical here? So which one is lower? The one or the two? You said two, huh? Two. Okay. Two or one? Who said any opposition? One? This one is lower or this one is lower? You said same. Same, huh? Same. So same. So you said two is higher than one. Any, any other answer? Bracing, both has bracing. Both has bracing. Both, we are talking about side sway prevented first. This brace. This also brace. Brace, that's why you cannot go sideways, you stay like that. Which one? One higher, I said two higher, you want to uh, make them say one the same as two. Uh, one higher, huh? so means two lower. Yeah? One higher means two lower. Okay, so the same. You said two lower or two higher? Two lower or higher? Two lower, so the same. You said one higher means two lower. Okay. Any other answer? So now, if we consider for the beam to bend like this and for the beam to bend like this, which one is easier? The two. Okay. So that's why this will be lower. This will happen first. Okay. In order for this to happen, you must prevent this. This beam, you must try to stop it somewhere in the middle so that it cannot go like this, then it has to go like that. In, in order to go to this shape, your P must be higher. So this P critical will be higher than this, meaning that this will happen first. So for brace or side sway prevented, this is the lowest buckling mode. And it is symmetric. It is symmetric because this one bend like this, this one bend like this, this one bend like this, this one bend like this. So if you look at this axis, they are symmetry. That's why it is called symmetric buckling. Okay, this is symmetric buckling. So that is for the case of uh, brace and side sway prevented. Now you look at the the other one, side sway allowed. Okay. Now we go to side sway allowed. Okay. So unbrace or side sway. In this uh, lecture, we, we use permitted. So again, if we have this, the difference now is. It can go left and right now. The frame, the whole frame can sway now. Okay. Okay. The whole frame can sway. So it will sway. Possibility it will sway like this. Okay. 
This one? Can it come like this? Cannot, because this is connected, cannot come like this. It can come like this, this is special frame. So this one go like this, this one must also go like that. So, but they are connected. They are connected here. So if this one, this one rotate like this, the beam also must rotate like this. If this one rotate like this, this one must also rotate like that. So the beam will rotate like this. So this, this one will bend to this shape. Okay. Any other possibility for size way? You cannot have this one, this one come like that. Okay. What about this one? How about this one? Yeah. They are the same. Okay. This is same mode. They are the same. Mode, same. Okay. It's like buckling mode, vibration mode. This, they are considered the same. Only this positive, negative. Okay. So they are the same. So the same thing, like if I talk about the, so the P critical, the buckling mode for sides wave prevented, the lowest one will be like this. So, we, so talking about mode shape, so for brace, yeah, for the case of brace, this is brace. So just now I draw like this, and it's like this. Okay. So it is the same mode if I draw in this way. So this one can go inside. This also come inside. But this one go up. Okay. So this and this same mode shape. Mode are the same. Only one is positive and negative one. Okay. Once you know this, you apply negative, then you get everything in that way. Mode shape, they are the same. This is mode, they are the same. Okay. Okay. So now. This is the buckling mode for brace. And this is the, for this, this is a buckling mode. Comparing this and this, okay? Brace and unbrace. So which one will be higher? Brace one will be higher. Okay. So unbrace one if you unbrace the frame. If the brace, if the frame is not properly braced, the critical load will be lower. Okay. So if you brace it, critical load will be higher. Okay. So that is the thing that we have to be clear. Now we want to know for this case, what is the range of the P critical now? The range which is, we want to look at, as I mentioned there, the range of the P-critical. The range now. So is correct. The unbraced one will be lower. Okay, now we want to see, to prove that really, the unbraced one will be lower by looking at the range. So for type side sway buckling, which is the one that I show on the left-hand side, the range of the critical load for this fixed condition, okay, for bottom fixed, will be greater than one quarter of P Euler. P Euler is pi square EI over L square, then, but less than P Euler. This is the range. Okay? It can be in between, in between these. Higher than this, but cannot be more than this. But for symmetric buckling, it will be increase a lot. Okay. It will be greater than two times the P Euler, but less than four times. 
So what is the actual value here? Depend on the EI, depend on the actual L, depend on the length of the beam, depend on the EI of the column, depend on EI of the beam, and also depends on this column is very long, this beam is very short, or this column is short, this beam is very long. It depends on that. But it will stay within that range for this fixed fix frame. Okay. So now, how do we get this? How do we know this is more than this, less than this? And how do we know this is more than this, less than that? Okay. So here, it shows how we get that range. Okay. In order to get this, let me start with tight sway buckling. Let me start with this. In order to get the lower range, we assume that this one is this beam here is the rigidity is approaching zero. Very, very thin thing. Very, very shallow, very, very small beam approaching zero. Okay. So when it is approaching zero, then if you look at this column or this column both, they are the same. So this is behaving like a fixed end. One end column fixed. The other one end is because this is approaching zero is like nothing. Like nothing. But it is allowed to rotate, but allowed to it is allowed to sway. And this one is actually prevent giving some giving some restraint, but because if IB is approaching zero, this is like no beam then. It's like the situation of no beam. So if you ignore this beam, then this column is like a fixed free column. This is close to a fixed free column. Okay, so fixed free column, the critical load is pi square EI over 4L square. Okay, 4L square. And if you write in terms of Euler load, so it becomes one quarter. 1 over 4 pi square EI over L square. So this is the extreme case. In actual, the I cannot be approaching 0. The I is in between. But we take the extreme case. The I is very, very close to 0. Means the beam is very, very slender. It's like nothing there. So this column is behaving close to fixed free column, cantilever column, cantilever column. The critical load is pi square EI over 4L square or 1 quarter pi square EI over L square. So this is why the lower range is like this. Now, in the same way, the extreme one is we consider the beam very deep, very deep beam. That means IB approaching infinity. So when IB approaching infinity, here is like a fix and rotation not allowed because if you have a beam very deep, meaning that rotation here completely almost zero. So it's like a column with fix and and the other end allowed to translate, but not allowed to rotate. Allowed to translate, not allowed to rotate. So for this beam, for this kind of column. The effective length is if you make it to the other side. Yeah. The other side you cannot see me. Yeah, for this beam here, which is fixed here and allowed to rot allowed to translate, but not allowed to rotate, the critical the effective length of this beam is L. Remember this kind of beam we consider fixed here, allowed to translate, not allowed to rotate. The effective length of this column is L. If the effective length is L, that means the critical load is pi square EI over L square. That's why you have an upper range here. That's why you have an upper range here. This is extreme now, extreme case. Cannot be, you cannot be a beam until I approaching infinity, which means your beam very, very deep. So we take to the extreme case. This is approaching very deep beam. This is very slender beam. That's why we get this range. Okay. 
So in the same way, if I go to this one now, if I go to symmetric buckling, then I try to get the lower range first. I do the same thing. I assume this beam very, very slender, which means IB is approaching zero. So when IB approaching zero, meaning that, remember this is braced now. So this is like, this beam actually can prevent some rotation here. But if this is very, very slender, IB approaching zero, it is like no beam there. So here it is behaving like almost like a pin. Nothing to prevent it from rotate, but it cannot translate. Okay, it cannot translate because this is side sway prevented. So this is behaving like a pin. So in this case, this column and this column is approaching the behavior of a fixed pin column. It's approaching the behavior of a fixed pin column. So fixed pin column, the effective length is about 0 0.7 L. So the critical is pi square EI over 0 0.7 L the whole thing square. And if you write it in terms of Euler load, it is approximately equal to two times Euler load. So that's why the lower range, the lower range here is corresponding to this behavior of a column fixed pin. Because this one approaching, assumed to be approaching zero, as if no beam there. No beam means nothing to prevent the rotation. But this is sway prevented, so it cannot go sideways. Almost free to rotate, so this is behaving like a beam, a pin, pin fixed column, effective length 0 0.7, critical load is pi square EI over 0 0.7 L square. And if you try to simplify that, it is approximately equal to two times the Euler buckling load. Then finally, the other side, again, assume very deep beam. Then here, rotation zero. And translation also zero. So this is behaving like almost like a fixed, fixed column. So fixed, fixed column, effective length 0 0.5. And the critical load is pi square EI over 0 0.5 L square. So it is four times the Euler load. That's why we have the upper range is this. This is extreme, extreme. So the actual beam is in between here. That's why the P critical will be in between. Okay. How much? It depends on EI of the beam, EI of the column, the length of the column, the length of the beam. But the range is like this. If this is fixed, 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 fixed. And from here, we can see if you allow, if you don't brace properly the column, the P critical will be very much lower than if you brace it properly. Okay. So that is uh, to prove that what we said just now is correct. If you brace it properly, the P critical can be very much higher than this. Yeah, but if you don't brace it, then it will be very much lower. Okay. Now, if I ask you now, okay, just now we have fix, fix. Now, if I ask you, fix, fix, yeah. We have fix, fix. This is brace. P critical greater than two times P Euler, less than four P Euler. This P E is pi square E I over L square. This is brace. Sometimes we use like brace. Now, if if it is like this now, okay. 
First, this is also brace. So if you change this support from fix fix to pin pin, this P critical here will be lower or higher? Lower. Oh, this is lower. Okay. This is also a place. Now, can you guess what is this and what is this? The range. Which one? P, yeah. Here, for here, fix, fix, greater than this, less than this. But for this, greater than what, less than what? Greater than? Four point. Zero point five P Euler. Here, one, like this. Yes. So this is for the case of this one completely nothing. Okay. This is for the case you assume this is approaching zero. Okay. Approaching zero means become pin pin. This is, you assume, this is, this assume the beam approaching infinity. So this become like a fixed, fixed pin. So fixed pin is, the P critical is two. This one is P. Okay. okay. So it should be in the range of greater than P, 1P, less than 2. Okay. Yeah, this is how we, this is approaching 0, so the pin pin. Pin pin is like this. Approaching infinity, fixed, fixed pin. Fixed pin is about 2 times the P Euler. Okay. Now, the same thing, what, what about it is unbraced? When it is unbraced? When it is unbraced? For unbraced, this one is greater than, greater than, less than this. Uh, less than B. Okay. Now, what about this? Greater than what? Less than what? Yeah. Assuming this one, you have to assume this one zero. And this is also pin, this is also pin. What happened to this? This is allowed to sway, eh? allowed to sway. So you become like this. This is unstable. Unstable. Okay. So this one will be zero. For this one, watching infinity. This is allowed to sway. Okay, allowed to sway. 
This means that this is not allowed to rotate, so it will be it will be like this. So it's behaving like a, a column like this. Pin at the top here allowed to translate, not allowed to rotate. So this column is behaving. In this case, these two column is behaving like a column pin here, allowed to translate, but not allowed to rotate. So what is the effective length of this column? It's equal to 2L. The effective length here is for this column is equal to 2L. So if 2L meaning that this is So this is how we can uh, estimate where it should where it should lie. I think so that later when we get the actual one, then we can see whether it is reasonable or not. The actual one will be in between, in between this and this. We don't know how much. It depends on it depends on the EI of the column. It depends on EI of the beam. It depends on the length of the column, the length of the beam. It depends on that factors. Okay. But we know it should be within this range. Within this range. Okay. So that is the, the part on the frame that I would like you to be clear about. Okay. Here in chapter uh, explanations about explanation about uh, this frame. If you go to chapter four, you can read through the beginning part of it. They're talking about uh, buckling of frame. What is things that we need to take note where we can find buckling of frame problems and sway or unsway. And here also it talks about the range okay, that we go through. In chapter four. So this is where uh, the explanation about why the range is like this for brace and unbrace. So all these are given here. So we have gone through that. And the next section is the detailed derivations, the detailed one. Okay, the detailed one where it consider symmetric buckling. So this one derived the governing differential equations using method of neutral equilibrium. So they start with this, uh, this is start with side sway buckling. Then you start with the slightly bent configuration, the buckling mode. So this is a buckling mode, the slightly bent configuration that will happen. And from the free body diagram, the governing the Differential equation is formed okay, until finally we get the critical load. Yeah? We get the critical load. But critical load, if you go through this part, have to solve a very complicated equations. And for special case, this one consider different height of the column, different length of the beam. Different EI for the column, different EI for the beam, everything included. Then they show in the particular case, yeah, in the particular case, if you have the height of the column the same, the height, the length of the beam the same, and also the rigidity, yeah, the bending rigidity of the column and the beam, the moment inertia, they are the same. By solving the equation that they derive, okay, we get the P critical. So the P critical for, for this column, yeah, for this case of frame, with the same height, same length, same EI here and same EI, it has been derived and then the value is given as 
7.34 EI over L square. Okay. Okay. 7.34 EI over L square. So if we try to if you try to change it into how many times what is this? We want to see whether it is P critical is greater than less than this what is this value 7.34 over pi square anybody has calculator it should be less than one zero point seven four yeah seven four right okay so our just now we say that it lies within the range of one quarter 0 0.25 to less than this so it is within that range okay. within that range of p euler of that column 0 0.74 so so it we prove that it is within that range so if you get more than this then something wrong if you calculate this and then get more than that then something wrong okay it cannot be more than this range, it should be within that range. Close to this side, close to that side, we don't know. It depends on the depends on the L of the column, L of the beam, L of the and also EI. Okay. And finally, if I may some conclude here for symmetric buckling, they do the same thing. For symmetric buckling, we have the same. Then use the method of neutral equilibrium the slightly bent configurations and finally we get to the okay, a critical is 5.2 the p critical is 25.2 25.2 EI over L square. So I want to change it into so what is this here? Twenty five point two divided by pi square. Twenty five point two. Twenty five point two divided by pi square. 2.5 eh? 2.5 okay. so just now we see that it should be greater than two times less than four so it is within that range okay so this is for the case of race L, EI, the same. L and EI, the same special case. Okay. This is also for so this is unbrace, uh, unbrace, and L the column, and L for the beam, they are the same. So for buckling of frame, I think, the, of course, because it is uh, involving more members. So this is only simple frame. If you have multi-story frame, then the analysis will become very, analysis will become very complicated, okay? Because we have to consider many frames, uh, many columns, okay? Which columns will buckle first? So, but there are, of course, computer methods to analyze, I think, 
grain to get the buckling load of grain. But basically, you need to be aware that if you don't brace it, then the P critical will be very much lower. Okay. Of course, we look at the case of only one yeah, single story frame, but if you go multiple story, if you don't brace the frame, the P critical will be very much lower compared to if you brace it properly. Okay. So that is the main message that I would like to make it clear. So that's basically I, what I would like to cover with you all, I think. And uh, for next week onwards, I think which is the last two weeks, the Fatima will take over from this lecture. And now I would like to pass over the uh, specimen. I will give the uh, Prize giving ceremony. Okay. Give you prize giving ceremony. There are three members that I prepare. Okay. They are of different length. Okay. I want you all to try out first. And um, there are three different lengths. Okay. They are all make of steel and three different lengths. And they are a bit dirty. Okay. So when you hold it, then your hand will become dirty. But uh, also, this edge here is, be careful with the edge. Some of the edge is sharp. Okay? So when I pass it to you, and then this, this one, I have also get ready. Okay? So maybe I will keep it in the lab if you pick. There are some... I try to, I already try to file it, but there are some still, there are some part you have to file it properly, okay? So that when you put in the, when you put in the experimental setup, you won't have any problem with, especially for example, if you can look at this, this one, there's a bit of sharp edge here, this one you have to file it, okay? And then be careful, don't hurt, uh, don't let it stretch your, Finger. Okay. So then, if you look at each of these member, it is not perfectly straight. Okay. This is already bent. So you can use that machine to try to measure, to try to get some idea what is the initial shape. Okay. You can use that, you put it. And you use a dull gauge, if you move it at different places, then you use some point as a reference, then you can see this point is more than this point, less than this point, more than this point, less than this point, you can get some idea about this. Some uh, imperfection is higher than the others. Okay? So that is the imperfection already there. This one may be better. So you are going to uh, use the clamp clamp conditions. Uh, pin pin is a bit. Uh, there are some other factors that we need to consider because pin pin it can deflect this way. It can also deflect that way. Uh, we have no control on that thing. So of course for clamp also possibility it will bend like this or it will bend like this. It depends on the imperfection. Okay. But maybe it's not that problematic compared with pin and pin. Pin, pin, it can easily suddenly bend this way or bend that way. So we use the clamp, clamp condition. Okay, clamp, clamp. So I'm giving you three specimens. Okay, you try to first start with the longest one to see what is the approximate load. Okay, because there is a limit of that machine how much load it can apply. So the longest one is uh, the load will be the lowest, and all three groups of you have different different set, but they are all same length. Okay, this one is longer than this, and also the next one is longer than this. So they are 
different length here, and you can see the the critical load will be different. Okay, if you get this one, the longest one, higher than this, then you have magic. Your this is something magic. This this is not the normal one. So the longest one, common sense, the critical load should be the lowest compared with this. If this one, if this you get the highest compared with this, then this is magic. This is a magic rod, okay? So now I pass it to each one of you. When this one, you don't dirty your hand, so I put this. But if not, then you're going to get your hand dirty. Yeah? So the first group can give you the ceremony. Please try to, if you want to wash it, just wash it with shampoo or whatever things, okay? okay. Second group. Third group. So you see whether uh, you try first and then let me know any problem. I think any things I think you have to observe. I think because this is the first time you do it. And think the first time also I asked students to, to do the lab work. And that machine supposed already working well, I think, yeah? because they changed the oil with cooking oil. So if you go there, you get good smell of cooking oil. Okay. okay. And this one, uh, I, I will leave it in the lab, I think, so that when you, before you do it, just try to file it, especially make sure there is no sharp edges when you fix it into the, file it properly. So that's all class. I think I will stop here. Okay. And you have to arrange the time. I, think, I don't know how much time you have. I think you have other assignment, other project. And also, I give you another good news. You have another assignment that I just uploaded on the e-learning. Okay. Because we have part A, there's no part B, it's not interesting. So I give you part B. Then is the part B, there's no part C, not interesting. So, but I stop with part B. So those questions are cover all the topics that I have already covered, okay? And some we already discussed. I want you to do it in class. So that's all for today's class. So unless you have anything, so try it out first this one. I And let me know any problem that you face, okay? Okay? So that's all class. I think I will stop here. For those who are online, I think I will stop here, okay?